just tell him. I know he's here. Good morning. Welcome to the United Methodist Church of Mantua. Glad to see everybody here this morning. I guess everybody's excited for today's game. Go Eagles. Yeah, first we had the World Series, now we have a chance to go to the Super Bowl. So Philadelphia is really excited this time of the year. Uh, we'd like to welcome everybody who's listening at home and viewing at home. Uh, we appreciate it. And if you're here today for the first time, would you please fill out one of the cards that are in the pews so we know who you are and we can recognize you? And at this time, we ask that you take your time while we listen to the prelude. Thank you.
Good morning. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful day. We thank you for another opportunity to come together and worship. Please be with each of us today. Help us to keep still. Help us to hear your word and to worship together and reset for the next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first hymn is number 657. This is the day. Please stand. seated, turn and say good morning to someone near you. Good. And just so you know, Pastor Doug is at the midwinter advance with the youth, so maybe say an extra prayer for him and for us as we try and do his job. Many of us try and do his one job. Uh, this time the children can come for the brown bag. Let's see what I have in my brown bag. What do I have? Kettle. Why would I have candles? Who is our great light? God and Jesus, right. Here's my candle. Do you see the light? Why are you looking at me strangely? You can't see my light. What's wrong with it? What happened? It blew out, because what would have happened if I put it in my brown, <coughs> my brown bag, lit? It would have burned the bag. Yes, it would have. So how am I going to light this candle? With the lighter? With a lighter? Don't have a lighter. What else could I use? I see something light shining. Turn around. Those candlesticks? Yes. So this is our Jesus candle up here. Okay? And without Jesus, am I lit? I don't have any light. That wouldn't be good, would it? 
So all I have to do is light my candle from Jesus' candle. And then what I can do with my light? How do I shine my Jesus light to others? Light their candles. But how do I do that? That was a really good answer. Light it with your candle. Light it with my candle. And how do I keep my candle lit? How do I keep Jesus in my life? Do I have to pray? How often? What will keep my candle lit if I pray? How often? Looks like they need some help. All the time, every day. What else do I do sitting right here? Read the Bible. Read the Bible. How often should I do that? Every day. How else can I shine the light of Jesus? Going to church like we are today. How can you as children shine Jesus' light? All of you smile, your biggest smile. (laughs) What happened to those smiles? (laughs) That's better. Just shining your smile makes people happy. How about being kind to a friend? Saying please, thank you, or I'd like to play with you. So it's other things besides just reading the Bible, praying. Jesus wants us to be kind to others, loving to others. Did you show love to anyone this week? Did you kiss mom and dad? That's showing love. You're not going to kiss your friends. How do you show your friends that you love them or like them? Play with them. That's a good one. So what we're going to do today, before my fingers get burned, I'm just going to blow this out. Now I don't know what to do with it. Thank you. Now I'm going to give you a really hard job. Take a candle. Turn it on. It's hard to turn on. If you can't turn it on, get one of the boys to do it. Ah, girl power. (laughs) Some of them I couldn't get on. Now, this is a hard one. I want you to go and give your candle to somebody. Smile and say, Jesus loves you. I don't care who you do it with. And then come back, give them your candle so that we can pass the light of Jesus Christ. And then I want you to come up and get your own. Okay? Let's say a prayer first. Dear Jesus, we are so glad that you are our light, that you light us, that you let us shine your light to others. And we don't want to hide your light. We want to shine it. So as these children go out, let them shine your light 
In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Go ahead, you can pick anyone. <laughs> Good job, <clears throat> because it's not enough to let your light shine. You have to shine it to others and let them know that Jesus loves them.
Matthias, can you go get the um, prayer book for me, please? <clears throat> I was checking our Facebook page to see if anybody posted any brief prayer requests on there, but I don't see any. So I'm just going to wait a minute for Matthias to bring the book up. Wish you a good morning. It's always strange when Pastor Doug's not here. <laughs> <clears throat> Wait, what'd you say? Except, except Pam's grateful that he's gone. No. <laughs> okay. Um, we have an unspoken request from Wilma Noctegall. So we'll keep her in. Her in prayer, um, we have prayers. Need prayers for Ann Maranta. She's still waiting to be transitioned, and um, praying that she'll continue to gain strength. I was talking to Joyce and um, Ann Newcomb this morning, and they said that she might be um, released from the um, facility t this week, and so we'll have to be praying for her as she might be heading home. Um, prayers for Bob Stanton's mom, Shirley. She fell this morning and hit her head, needed stitches, but seems to be okay otherwise. Um, and for Robin Brelsford, um, on Christmas Day, she discovered that she had strep A and, is tes and testing then also revealed that she has stomach cancer. And this is from Hal McGeorge, so we want to keep her in prayer. Um, so let us go to prayer at this time. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we can come to you with all of our needs, with all of our concerns, with all of our questions, and with all of our doubts. We thank you that you are a God who hears and a God who cares. And we just ask, Lord, that you would free us from worry, free us from things that keep us from trusting in your goodness and in the plans that you have for us. This morning, Lord, we pray for those who have been brought before our congregation. We pray for Anne Maranta as she is still dealing with effects from her stroke and that you would just be with her as she is possibly released this week and that you would help her as she returns home. We pray for Bob Stanton's mother, that you would be with her and help her to heal quickly. We pray for Wilma's request, Lord. We don't know what it is, but we know that you know. So we just ask that you would pray for her and be with her. We pray for Robin, who is facing a cancer diagnosis, Lord, and we just ask that you would give her strength Help her to know that you will be with her through all that she might have to endure and that your plans are good ones. Lord, we pray for our pastors, our youth leaders, and our youth as they're away on their retreat this weekend. We just ask that you've helped them to have a time when they can draw closer to you and that you have blessed their time together. We pray that you will give them safe travels back here today and that you would just continue to be with our youth as they seek to know you better and to keep you in their lives and to um, witness to others about your great love. Lord, we pray that we will be examples to our youth and to our children, that they will see you in us, and we ask that you would help us to look to them that we might have the childlike faith that we need and that we so desire. Lord, we just ask that you would be with everyone in this congregation and those watching at home, that you would help them to leave here today feeling refreshed and renewed. We pray for any unspoken needs, and we just know, Lord, that you hear prayers even before we utter them. 
Lord, we just put all these things in your hands, and we would just ask, Lord, that you would guide us in all that we do. And now, Lord, we ask that you would help us as we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we, may we continue to worship God by the giving of our gifts and our offerings. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that we can always trust you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. Your word teaches us that whoever sows generously will reap generously, and your word has been proven to be true. We give you this offering today. With it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Please now take it and use it for your kingdom and glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence, we pray. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask all of this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. for the hymn of preparation found in the faith we sing a hymn books page 2173 shine jesus shine and be sure and let your light shine this week for the lord amen <laughs>
And now to read the scripture. The scripture this morning is Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it's thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. Rather, they put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Thomas. I just want to give you a little background on how pastors do sermons. So for weeks, God had been leading me to scriptures on light. I had my sermon probably three quarters of the way done. I was finishing it up last Friday. I went to go into my computer and the little box where you put your password. There was no box. I could not put in my password and get into my sermon. I'm thinking, okay, it's a week ahead of time, no problem. Tried and tried, could not get into it. I said, okay, God, you must be leading me in a different direction. So I got out my other computer and I started the sermon all over again, only to find out that I had no Comcast. So all of my commentaries and all of my notes, I couldn't get into. I went, okay, God, you gave me some notes this morning when I woke up, so I'll use them. And that's how this sermon made its way to you this morning. I mean, God has canceled my sermons before, but not this dramatically. I read a story about camp counselors. Now, when you go to be a camp counselor, you usually go a week ahead of time, and they teach you everything that you need to do. Well, these camp counselors were leaning, learning how to do caving, how to lead their campers into dark caves. Well, the thing was, none of these counselors had been in a cave before. They had their flashlights, and they had to go up this hill they were all hot. The only thing about the dark cave was that it was cool. They stepped inside, turned their flashlights on. The further they went, the narrower the opening was. They had never been camping before. They forgot that they had an expert God, guide and that wasn't a mistake to guide them. This guide had done it many times before. He wasn't going to let them get lost. But they're thinking all kinds of things. It's getting smaller and smaller. Are they going to make us go down on our bellies and crawl? Finally, they got into this giant room. And they all went, oh, thank goodness. Until the counselor said, I want you to experience real darkness. Turn off your flashlights. And they're going, oh, no, not that. And so they turned their lights on. He said, now look at the person next to you. They're there, but we can't see them. Put your hand in, as close in front of you as you can get it. We can't see it. We can't see anything. 
and they're panicking. And the counselor says, I'm going to turn on the light of Jesus. He lit one little match. It lit up the whole room. Well, now the counselors are giggling, giggling and thankful that they can see. They had a guide that day. They had an experienced guide. They also had God as their guide and Jesus as their guide. This one little light of Jesus shined upon them all and they could take a breath because this light lit up the room. John 8, 12 tells us, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never, ever walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Do you think that Jesus is as bright as this light? Brighter. Is he as bright as the lights on our candles? Brighter. I think of Jesus as one of those uh, lights that shines in your backyard, that shines very, very brightly. Jesus says, You. You, 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 and all of you are the light of the world. And Jesus doesn't want us to put our lights under a bushel. Because what happens? You can't see it. Jesus wants our light to shine. Jesus was teaching on the hillside by Capernaum, which is by the um, Sea of Galilee. And he had just taught the Sermon on the Mount, which is about all the blessings that God is going to give us as disciples. He was preaching specifically to his disciples, but he had all these crowds around him. They were also listening. And now he speaks directly to the disciples. You are the light of the world. He's speaking to us. You are the light of the world. Jesus wants us to shine our light like the children did this morning. It's our responsibility to reflect Jesus' light to others. Remember, Jesus' light was focused on the needs of others. He calls us as men, women, and children to shine the light of Jesus into the world. In Jesus' day, they had oil lamps. They didn't have batteries. They didn't have lights. They didn't have matches. It was very hard to light the oil lamp so they would never put it under a bushel basket. Some of us this morning are lights like this. Some of us are night lights. And some of us are floodlights. You decide this morning which God is calling you to be. A little light 
or a big light. God can use all size lights to show his love and provisions. So how can we shine our light to others? There are many trials and hardships. If we know that somebody's going through a tough time, we can call them, we can text them, we can actually talk face to face. We can do things like sing in the choir. Every week, they shine their light to us in song. We can work with the children. Every week, the people that work with the children see the light of those children, and their lights are shining brightly. I know because I've attended Sunday school. And I know that their teachers shine their light. One important way to shine our light is to tell other people about God. You notice that when I told the children I was giving them a hard thing to do because they actually had to go and tell somebody that Jesus loved them. I'm going to give you that same hard job this week for you to go and tell someone that Jesus loves them and that you are shining Jesus' light. Without Jesus' light, we can't share the love of Jesus with others. Some people are hungry. And Jesus said you have to give them something to eat. Some people are thirsty. And God said you have to give them something to drink. Some people we don't know. God said go and make yourself known to them. Some people need clothing. I bought my sweatpants and underwear this morning for the Mantua schools. I invite you to do the same. We all know somebody that's sick. We can call them and tell them, or we can take them something and leave it on their porch. Jesus wants us to light our lights, to shine, in all of those ways. And I'm sure that you can think of many, many ways. Think, is your light shining this morning? Are you a candle or a floodlight? Are you telling others about Jesus? That's why Jesus came to earth to shine God into our world. Jesus came to shine his light on us, and he expects us to shine our light on others. Tell someone this week about Jesus. Let us pray. Oh Lord, I thank you for the light that shines within me. Help my light of faith my light of hope and my light of love shine to others. Remind me that you have commanded me to let my light shine. In a time of war, may my light be a light of peace. In a time of hate, may my light be a light of love. In a time of poverty, let my light be a light of prosperity. In a time of scarcity, let my light be a light of abundance. Bless me this day to be a light to the world. Help me this day to let my light shine, that all people may see Jesus' goodness, mercy, 
power shining through me to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. And now we will do the prayer of healing after the screech is done. Lynn's going to help me. If you'd like a prayer said over you, come up and we will pray with you. Tom, I'm assuming you couldn't find. I think we still have some oil in here. Good morning. We have a few announcements. Cherub and Junior Choir rehearsal following worship, coffee fellowship, and there is no Children's Sunday School today. Next Sunday, there will be a meeting for all who would like to find out more about the July 23rd mission trip to Reading, PA with a little acts of love. We will meet at 10.50 a.m. in McConnell Hall. Reminder that outreach team is collecting sweatpants and underwear for pre-K through third grade for the Mantua Township schools until the end of February. There is a receptacle in the narthex for your donations. If you would like to sing with the choir for the Easter Cantata, the rehearsals are 8 p.m. in the choir room. All singers welcome. Uh, sign up for fellowship. There's a list on the counter in McConnell Hall. 
and then please read the rest of the announcements in your bulletin. And can everybody please stand for the final hymn. The words will be on the screen. It's not 585, so you can look at the words on the screen if you could please stand. Thank you. Jesus' light shine brightly within you, showing all that you are a Christian, a loving, kind, considerate Christian. And as we go, remember, it is our responsibility to shine Jesus' light to others. Amen. Amen.